Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are back and better than ever. I know that you can hardly wait for me because you want me to get to the calculus. Love the calculus. Today we are exploring derivatives of trigonometric functions, specifically the derivatives of sine, cosine, and tangent. So we are going to explore it use uh, by visual. Uh, we're going to explore it visually. Okay, so make sure you understand what's happening here. I have graph sine in blue and cosine in red. And so what we're exploring is the derivative of the sine of x. And remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent to the curve. So right here, right at this point the slope or of the tangent to the curve or the slope uh, to sine is equal to 0.32, okay? Uh, which means the derivative at this particular value of x is 0 0.32, okay? And the first thing I want you to look at is that the coordinates of A are the same as the coordinates of B, okay? and b is a point on the graph of cosine x. Okay, So as I move, I just want you to look here and here just to convince yourself that the x-coordinates will always be the same no matter where I put move the point. Move the point, I guess. And I drew a green line up and down connecting them to the, to those two so you can see that. And now I just want to hide this um, just so it doesn't get confusing because that's really not what we're after, okay? And now, um, just a bit of a recollection. This, this B coordinate, this is the X coordinate, this is the Y coordinate. And remember, the Y coordinate is always the value of the function. So right now, for X equal to 1.28, the value of cosine is 0.29. If I move it a little bit for x equal to 2.46, the value of cosine is negative 0.78. Um, now what I want you to do is watch as I move the point along the graph of sine and look at the uh, very, very complicated relationship between the slope of sine and the uh, corresponding value of cosine. Now remember, A and B have the exact same x-coordinates, yes? And anywhere I move this, the slope of sine, uh, the slope of the tangent to sine, is exactly the same value of cosine. So what can we say about that? Well, couldn't we say that the derivative of sine at a particular x value is equal to the corresponding value of cosine at that same value of x. What we're saying is the derivative of sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. Think about that. The derivative of the sine of x is equal to cosine x. And it makes sense. The slope of this line is negative, and the value of cosine is below the x-axis, is indeed negative, okay? So visually, we have shown that the derivative of sine is equal to cosine, okay? All right, so let's go um, to our next page, okay? And same graph, except I have drawn the tangent to cosine. Okay, the tangent line is at the cosine curve. Um, so I'm finding the derivative of cosine here. What's the derivative of cosine? At this particular point of B, the derivative is equal to 0 0.508 because that is the slope of the tangent to the curve for this particular value of B. And again, the coordinates of A and B are exactly the same. 2.5, 2.5. I move it over here. Uh, negative 1.1, negative 1.1. And the A coordinate is um, on the sine curve. Okay, so again, I'm going to hide the coordinates of the B on the cosine curve, just so you don't have so much to look at here. And again, I want you to look at the value of sine 
as compared to the slope of cosine for the same value of x. Okay, so 8.891, negative 0.891. Move it over here. Let's see. Cosine, let's see, the slope of cosine at this particular uh, point, the slope of the cosine curve is negative 0.783. And the sign is 0.783, positive 0.783. What if I go here? Okay, uh, At this particular value of x, remember this is the same value of x for sine as it is for cosine. Um, the slope is negative 0.521 and the value of sine is positive 0.521. Are you seeing that we have an opposite relationship here between cosine and its derivative? Um, as sine and there we go again just one more time we have opposite values here and hopefully what you see is the derivative of cosine is equal to uh, let me say that again the derivative of the cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x so let's go to a positive one to sort of nail this one okay so at x equal to 1.19 the derivative of cosine is negative 9.29 and the value of sine is positive 9.29 and if I negate this positive value of sine I get the slope of the tangent to the cosine curve for x equal to 1.19 and the upshot is the derivative of cosine is equal to negative sine so there we go our two biggies derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x and the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x okay and we did that by visual proof I'm not going to show you the formal proof right here um, now the derivative of tangent x is equal to 1 over cosine squared x which is equal we could also write as secant squared x and I want you to recall that 1 over sine x oops, is equal to cosecant of x. 1 over cosine x is equal to secant x. And 1 over tan x is equal to cotangent x. Those are um, our other trig functions, our other main trig functions. Okay. Um, and the proof for tangent x is just, um, uh, let's see, we know that tan x equals sine x over cosine x. So if you use the chain rule um, and you take the derivative of tangent x and you use sine x and cosine x, not chain rule, the quotient rule, you arrive at 1 over cosine squared x. And I can show you that in class as well. Okay, so differentiate with respect to x. So I'm going to say that this is equal to y just so we can say y prime equals. We have a product x times sine of x and the product rule says uh, y prime equals v du plus u dv. And so my u is x, my v is sine x, so v du would be sine of x multiplied by du, the derivative of x is 1, plus u x, u is x, multiplied by dv, u dv. The derivative of sine is cosine. And just, I mean, I don't, it's, it doesn't even really need to be simplified. y equals sine x plus x cosine x. No big whoop. Okay. Uh-oh, what about this one? So for b here, um, y, we'll say that's equal to y. And so I'm just going to rewrite that just so we recall that y equals 4. What this is really saying is tangent of, I'm going to make this a bracket. That just makes me feel more comfortable, of 3x squared. Okay. And remember, um, if y equals tan x, y prime, I'm going to use secant x, secant squared x. It just makes life easier, I think, instead of writing 1 over cosine squared x. You can do whatever. So we have a chain rule. We're going to have to use the chain rule twice because we have an outside function squared. We have another outside function tangent. 
And then um, we have the, ins the ultimate inside fact uh, function, 3x. So y prime is going to be equal to the derivative of the outside function, the power rule, 2 times 4 is 8, tangent of 3x, okay, to the first power, so I don't have to write anything there, okay, times, and now I have to take the derivative of this inside function, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So that's going to be a, a, a secant squared of whatever we're taking the tangent of. So this becomes secant squared of 3x. Okay. Now, I'll do this in green. The inside function is 3 times the derivative of, the, uh, I'm sorry, is 3x. And the derivative of 3x is 3. Okay. So if I clean that up just a little bit, um, I can do the 3 times the 8, and I have 24 tan of 3x secant squared 3x. And if the secant bothers you, you can always write secant squared as uh, times 1 over cosine squared of 3x which I guess you could also write very simply as, let's see, 24 um, times 3x, 3 times 24, 6, 72x, so 72x tan 3x. This is not all absolutely necessary. You can do it if you want, if it helps you to evaluate something easier, times cosine squared of 3x. Done. Okay. Just a couple more examples. Um, sine of x squared, let's say it's equal to y, and we're, we're taking the derivative, so this is a chain rule. The outside function is sine because only the x is squared, not the sine function. So y prime equals derivative of outside. Derivative of sine is cosine, so that becomes cosine of x squared times the derivative of the inside function times 2x. Done. Maybe you want to put this first, 2x cosine of x squared. Okay. Here, I'm going to rewrite this as y equals cosine. Now, what's to the 1 half power is the x. Okay, so that's the inside function. The outside function is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of whatever we are taking the cosine of, okay? Now the inside function is uh, x to the 1 half, so that's times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Done! Unless we need to evaluate, then I would probably rewrite this as negative sine root x over 2 root x. And then our final function, c, Okay, if I let that equal y, I'm going to rewrite y as y equals. Now that's the square root of the whole thing. So now the um, outside function is to the one half power, or is the one half power. So the derivative of outside is one half of cosine x to the negative one half multiplied by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of x, remember this is the inside function, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and I could simplify that by making this negative sine x all over, uh, let's see, 2 multiplied by the square root of cosine of x. That is it, hope you enjoyed it, I know I did, I am out!